Hello and welcome back to the Paddle and Finn podcast. I'm your host, Brian. And I'm Jay. Tonight, you guys, Mr. Jay Randall is back. Back on the podcast. Sorry, sorry we missed you last week. I hope I didn't bore everybody with my rambling, but uh, I know, and you know, and everybody knows I'm like I'm the Vanna, <laughs> you know. I mean, how could you now want to look at this face like all the time, or at least for the duration of the podcast? Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> and to the to the the viewers and listeners, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was good, man. Uh, yeah, it it was kind of funny. Uh, I know the other night I did a live stream for the uh, 100 sub giveaway on the YouTube channel. And a bunch of guys were giving me crap about not doing the Slide Dog podcast. I'm like, look, man, like Paddle and Finn podcast is first. I'm trying to do three YouTube videos a week now. Like, It's what, insane. What else do you want from me? <laughs> but I think, uh, I think I'm going to try recording one tonight. So be on the lookout. It might be out Whoa. tomorrow or later in the week, but I told everybody it wasn't dead. I just, you know, have, haven't had much to talk about over there because I've been using it all over here. So, that's right. Yeah. That's right. That's where all the content is, man. Paddle it's right and Finn. here yeah. on the podcast. <laughs> this is where you get it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, real quick, uh, this ties into our first subject. Um we just did a uh, intro to kayak fishing seminar down at Rocktown Adventures. I know I mentioned it on the last pod, but uh, yesterday I tried going out in the kayak. It was ridiculously cold. I was trying to move up in the KBF monthly challenge, and yeah, I didn't get any fish. But I went to the river and I was bouncing around the river, and I got to a spot and uh, I was actually on the phone with the Godfather, aka Scott, former co-host. And uh, this dude was waiting, and he comes walking by me. He's like, hey, man, you one of the paddle and fin dudes? I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, yeah, man, I just saw one of your YouTube videos. You were down on St. Chris Lake down in Springfield. Good stuff, man. Keep it up. I was supposed to come to the seminar last night. I didn't make it, but uh, my buddy went. And uh, I was like, oh, cool. You know, we'll be doing more of them. So he... Uh, just a shout out to that guy. I didn't get his name, and uh, but it was kind of weird. I was like, "Whoa, people recognize me!" <laughs> so, oh, dude, like, yeah. you're, you're famous. You're, you, you know what though? You're like Rockford famous. Yeah, Rockford famous. Yeah, yeah. and I don't know if that's good or bad. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's I don't know something. either. It's, I don't know it's either. Just something. But uh, <laughs> shout out to that dude. He watches the YouTube videos and uh, listens to the pod. So. Yeah, it was cool running into him. And then, uh, yeah, we had some podcast. Uh, I think two guys listened to the podcast that were at the seminar, two or three. And then, um, yeah, a bunch of new guys wanting to get into the sport. I know uh, the one listener, he bought a Old Town Predator last year, hasn't put it to use yet. And, you know, was just kind of looking for some tips. Um, we had some older guys there. You know, no offense, not not knocking you for being older, but I think it was cool, man. Let's just say the demographic yeah. was quite vast. It was. Yeah, we had young, young guys all the way up to old retired yeah. guys, and it was super yeah. cool. Um, yep. And everybody said they took a lot away from it. I know um, we ran the GoPro. I forgot to start it right at the start, but uh, it – it was shortly after we started, so I may try throwing that together and uh, putting it up on the YouTube. So, well, I, I meant to ask you did the did the audio come out pretty good on that? Yeah, it came out pretty decent, except for uh, shout out to the legend, aka Rick, down there at <laughs> Rocktown. He was helping a customer, so you can kind of hear some of his chitter chatter in the background oh, at the beginning. Rick, yeah, I'll get on, I'll get on the legend about that. Jeez, barriers, <laughs> Rick. Barriers, but, but uh, yeah, no, it was good, man. Uh, the The audio came out pretty decent, um, and I want to just say thanks to like the listeners because some of the topics we talked about was stuff um, that some of you guys have asked us. You know, like we touched on um, 
the rod aspect. And, uh, you know, I gave a shout out to Jeff Gruss for sending that, uh, question in and there was some other stuff too um that were past listener feedback questions type deals so yeah i mean what what was your thoughts on it how i know we were both like all right let's do this on the way there and then we kind of started and we were both kind of like oh wow like we we got some people here (laughs) you know yeah Yeah. i mean i knew there'd be people there it's like you know it's funny it's you know it kind of reminded me of the days being back in the bands, and I, and I know I mentioned that to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, except this time I didn't really have the butterflies, but at the same time, like as soon as I started talking, I felt like I was like, like I told you, I was like, did I sound like a moron? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I was like, I just really felt like I was really trying to push out sentences, and I'm like, dude, and then after I'm like, just talk, man, just yeah. talk, yeah, like just just talk to him, don't try, you know, I'm like, you're just trying to to be like. You know, so many things. And again, I think a lot of that had to do with uh, the fact that we had some elderly gentlemen in there. Sure. And you, you want to sound smart. You yeah, know? Right, right. So you don't want to sound like a dumbass. Yeah. So You don't want to be you like, know, you yeah, talk- bro, yeah. this is the paddle you need, man. Like, yeah, yeah. Man, you know, you want to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's like, and I, I never really wanted to pass on good information. I didn't, like I said, it, I'm just like anybody else, you know, if you're trying to make an impression, sure. you know, but also trying to be yourself. You know, sometimes that line gets blurred. and Sure. But. I mean, like I, said, I pushed through it, you know, and me and you started bouncing off each other pretty good. Um, there were a lot of good questions. Uh, you know, uh, I think there were a lot of good answers to that, of course. Uh, and I hope like everybody that was there, like really got something out of it. And from, you know, the, the after party, um, yeah. you know, it was uh, yeah, the, the after event. Yeah, uh, Everybody was pretty cool and, and pretty, uh, you know, receptive to what we said and had additional follow up questions questions um you know which was great you know so i i thank everybody too that was really cool thanks for letting me you know be a part of that sure um you know i mean because I, I was you know i don't really have a problem like with public speaking but it felt like i was a little bit out of my uh comfort zone for a yeah. little bit you know sure, but sure, as sure. soon as we as soon as we get rolling though everything was fine you know you know it was, it was a good time but uh yeah, and it was funny. We got, you know, I I, I love the interaction where they start laughing at me. Too. Yeah, I got to say, I'm, I I love the attention. So yeah. let's keep that up. So yeah. whenever I say something funny, definitely laugh. <laughs> and everything I say is funny. So you should be laughing all the time. Yeah, no. I mean, no, it was really cool. <laughs> uh, I think one of my favorite parts was just uh, the interaction, the the questions guys were throwing out there, and us being able to respond in a good fashion where they'd understand and they took concept yeah. to it. And I would say oh, pretty much everybody I talked to afterwards, cause we had some pizza uh, and beers and sodas and whatever um, after afterwards. And, you know, we were interacting with everybody. I had my boat set up, guys were checking that out and um, you know, everybody, said to me and i think you had the same response like thank you so much for doing this like it was super informative and things of that nature and there was even some guys that were experienced um yeah that that took something away from it um so when we do post that maybe check that out on the youtube because you know we might mention something that you don't think of i know there's things all the time that um just me from watching other YouTubers, uh, other, uh, people, even Jay, you know, I learned something from him every now and then, you know, when we're out on the water. Well, and I I (laughs) hope the same thing for me, you know, and that was the one thing I said during it was, you know, fishing is a never ending learning experience. You're always learning something new. Every time you're on the water, setting up your gear, you know, doing whatever, um, so it was it was kind of cool, but uh, I know we got some some folks that are going to be new to kayak fishing coming this season. Yeah. So, which is cool, you know. And uh, we talked about doing maybe like a a tournament type seminar too uh, for the guys that were interested in that because we did get a few questions about like online tournaments and live events and things like that. Um, speaking of which, national championship was just this past weekend. Shout yeah. out to two former guests, uh, Dusty Yacker, uh, took 10th place, 
and Mr. Drew Gregory took second. Yeah. yeah. Dude. Yeah, he took he took a saucy 20 grand. Man. It, was, it was 20 plus because he got some bonus bucks out of that. Yeah, that's crazy, dude. Yeah. You know what, though? Well, the, he, the, the guy that. I tell you, he real, is so experienced. Well, yeah, but the guy that took first uh, took over 70, I think it was like 73,000 with all the bonus bucks because yep. first place paid yeah, 50. But uh, it was cool. I was watching the awards ceremony. Uh, you were driving home. I think I texted you about yeah. Drew, but when they called Drew and the other guy up, because they turned the tournament standings off. and um, Yeah, they usually do that. You know, Greg Blanchard took third. Shout out to Greg, man. Uh, I love his content. And, uh, and then they called up the final two, and he said – Chad Hoover made some comment about, like, you know, this short little guy from Jackson Kayaks, whatever, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and Drew came up, and uh, he handed the mic to both of them. And what I thought was interesting was uh, Drew, like, really broke down what he was doing. And he was in the blue sky, the 360 angler, and he said he was standing on top of the seat on the blue sky, sight fishing uh, fish on beds, and he said he found a, a stretch of this lake or whatever river. I guess the river ran through the lake, and he found a section where there was current, and there was these big cypress trees. And um, he was looking for trees that were bare, clean on the back, like no weeds or anything, and that's where all the fish were. If there was any kind of stuff hanging off that tree, wasn't a fish there. And he was... Said he didn't change his bait the whole time. Z-Man chatter bait with a, a razor shad, right? That's what they are, the razor shads, the big 8-inch ones. Uh, that you... Well, the the ones like, well, the 8-inch ones are the mags, I think. Yeah. And then the, they're called swimmers if they're smaller than that. <clears throat> yeah, swimmers or razor shad or something yeah. like that. But uh, Yeah. yeah. yeah he I'm caught... sure there's another version out there, too. I think the fluke yeah. is another name, too. Gotcha. But, uh, yeah, he said that's how he caught all his fish. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it was huge, man. And shout out to the guy that won Elsie. Um, I don't have too much information on him, but, uh, I was thinking about reaching out to him and seeing if, uh, we could maybe oh. get him on a pod. That would be cool. That would be, yeah, that would definitely be cool. And maybe an epic return of Drew Gregory that's on your list to, to do. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll get, I'll, get, like, I'll get in touch with him. I did say congrats to him. Yeah, you know, he was. So, I did on Facebook was, as well. Like, thanks. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, he's a good dude. You know, he's yeah. a busy, busy boy. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was cool, man. Uh, I know there was a lot of big fish caught. I know Dusty caught a nine pounder. I saw he. I think he's posting it today uh, on Facebook. Um, I know. Uh, our good friend Rodney Hicks, he caught his PB down there. He had a little yeah. video, and man, it's if you guys don't funny, follow yeah. Rodney, he's got a YouTube channel too. I think it's Rodney Hicks Fishing or something. Uh, he's a good Chicago boy, and uh, yeah, shout out to Rodney. He's a good dude. Yeah, he had me cracked. That video had me cracked up. <laughs> yeah, dude, I was because I, I didn't, I didn't expect him to yell at the end. Like, he's like, oh, I'm like, yeah. dude. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah. It was kind of like an Iconelli freak out, you know? Yeah. Hey, but, it was all uh, like chill. He's like, I'm going to go for the intro and then I'm just going to erupt. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, shout out to everybody that competed down there. I know there was some people from, uh, quite a few people from KBL, um, Susie Roloff, uh, Dusty Yacker, and David Brook and michael watson and then rodney fishes the great lakes which you're fishing and i think there was a couple other guys from great lakes down there as well so shout out to all those guys yeah yeah good job guys yeah yeah and uh i know um catch the catch team catchboard team they took third for the team event i forget who it was that took first and i think jackson was up there too yeah, um, I sadly have not been paying that much of attention, but Slacker. full disclosure, I'm a little busy doing other stuff. Yeah, no, I'm I mean, trying to keep up, but I'm behind right now. That, that's kind of the big news in the kayak world, but uh, 
I was, uh, I, w- I shouldn't say I was surprised, but I was blown away by Greg Blanchard because he had just won one of the Hobie Bass Open events out in California two weeks ago and then takes third in the national championship. So he's hot, man. He's a guy to watch out for. Overachiever. (laughs) Yeah. No, no. Great job, Greg. Yeah. No, he's a he's a good dude. So your vids are your videos are cool. They're they're fun to watch. I love them. I love them. (laughs) But uh, yeah, man. So seminar went good. Uh, Made some new friends. Got some new listeners. All that good stuff. So anybody that attended, shout out to you guys. Thanks for showing up. if anybody's interested we're gonna have another one we don't have the date yet but we'll announce that and uh we'll kind of go from there so yes sir and then uh why don't you give us an update you've been you've been struggling with the new trailer getting ready for the season our both of our first <laughs> tournaments are a week soon a week from saturday for you and a yep. week from sunday for me yeah <clears throat> yeah so uh yeah that rooftop tent like it's awesome <laughs> but, but it's also come at a price yeah it's uh, giving in you some a few instances, headaches <laughs> yeah yeah it's quite literally come at a price uh so i've been having my trailer currently is very top heavy um and i kind of knew this would happen so I am basically more tall than I am wide, um, but not in real life. But uh, so the trailer is like, you know, pretty tippy. It's a lightweight trailer, though. It's not like a standard boat trailer by any means. This is very, this is a, a sport utility right on trailer. It's a nice trailer. It, it, you know, when I had just have the kayak on top, you know, if I have a kayak on bottom, the kayak on top. It works great. Never had a problem. It's got like 4.8, you know, um, wide tires on an eight inch rim they're like super small tires <clears throat> uh, which most of them are kind of running on but uh yeah so anyway uh, i'm pretty uh top heavy right now so i am currently redesigning the bottom portion to add some weight and i may do some other alterations and what i mean by that is um i've already so i needed a wider tire i think was the biggest thing i really needed to make you improvement on um move make getting a larger axle on that trailer doesn't seem to be as easy as it is to maybe widen the stance uh uh, mainly because of where the uh where the springs and everything connect i'm not a welder by any means so i kind of looked at a lot of stuff and i just just saw that even though you're getting a wider axle there seems to be like a uh, uh a predetermined amount of hub uh off the end of the off the the end of the, the axle um that g- grows with the shaft so to speak so sure. even though you you're enlarging it everything else is going <laughs> to the to the right and left so you're not really solving the problem in the sense of the springs actually connecting because the springs have a little hole in them where a divot in the actual axle goes to um basically make them stay <clears throat> so that being said <clears throat> i looked at axle options axles are like 180 bucks plus plus like i said i have to figure out how to properly move uh the axle to where it works properly with the leaf spring um on my trailer i only have one leaf spring um so it's uh you know like again it's a very lightweight trailer yeah um so anyway i abandoned the whole axle thing i mean it's on the books but i'm pricing out everything trying to make you see what would take the longest to and all that so what i came up with is getting wheel spacers um, and getting like aluminum, uh, you know, T was it T ten sixty or something like that. Oh, that's great. I'm not, I don't even have the details in my brain right now. But <laughs> anyway, they're basically, you know, DOT regulated. Like they're they're safe for the highway. Sure. They're not, you know, yeah. these aren't like uh, ATV spacers which exist. Right. So that's another thing. If you look to do something like this, you got to pay attention to that. Um, so essentially, you know, again, it, I have eight inch rims i didn't want to go I, so going higher was a problem because it just makes it taller so i wanted to really stay as low as i could sure so i, I ended up um 
you know, using the spacers to be able to put a nine inch wide tire on there, which is like a motorcycle trailer type tire. Yeah. Um, which is about 10, uh, 18 inches high. Sure. And my current tire is like 15 and a half to 16. Um, so I got a little bit of height that I needed and I had, I have a clearance issue, uh, f- from before, like we talked about, about getting the, the, uh, the trailer jacks, the stabilizer jacks to be able to have enough clearance because mine uh, will sit like this and then they actual you know they'll actually deploy like that so i couldn't do that um i I couldn't get the rotation to unlock them and lock them these tires will allow me to do that so i got that height i haven't installed anything yet it's going to happen this week but uh but basically i got two and a quarter spacers which pushed out the hub which allowed um a seven inch deep rim of course that's in half at like 350 you know or three sure. inches fit, or 3.5 inches rather uh and fit onto the axle perfectly so that's where i am now and i have some other problems to deal with i'm i used to love trailer or you know trailer launching this boat or any of the boats that i trailered because it was just easier um i could you know get it all set up and then just back it in the water and then off I go. Uh, so now that seems like it's going to be thrown to the side because I think I have to lower my rod tubes t- too. Yeah. And I have to decide their positioning on the, the trailer to do that because I want to put more weight over the tires. And plus the spacers and the new tires add weight. So, I mean, weight is being added where the axle isn't really suffering sure. from the weight. Sure. Um, so it's just more on the road rotation so you know i'm just getting that all together and rethink you know just thinking about that and like i was telling you like you'll go out in your garage you know because i already know these problems exist um and and you'll like grab a beer and you stare at your trailer for like two hours you know and then you've got like the girlfriend or the wife coming out going what are you doing yeah like you just like are you like you know are you okay it's like yeah i'm just trying to figure some stuff out (laughs) like i like mentally i'm making a note of like where stuff is and if i do this what's going to affect this you know right <clears throat> what do i got to move and then i, I got a, a measuring tape i must have measured right. the trailer like a, a thousand times already in every which way so uh but yeah there's some things on the books first thing is get the bigger tires on yeah. there and then figure out the rod tubes are definitely coming down and if that doesn't solve the problem well then i'm cutting the tiers another six to six let's just say six inches to twelve sure six twelve inches um <clears throat> get all tongue-tied but uh you know and maybe that will help solve it i know i gotta bring it down the engine you know the engineer that helped me design that pretty much told me that hey if you put anything up here you might have an issue yeah. well it's happened <laughs> so uh but that's fine you know it, it's a custom job it's like it's, uh, you know, I mean, it, it is what it is. Uh, ultimately, though, this is becoming a very expensive trailer, and I think by the end of it, yeah. I probably could have afforded a Tennessee trailer or something by now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. we're getting there. Yeah. You know, it's a, but it is, uh, it, I, it's, you know, I, I'm glad everyone likes it and stuff, uh, but it's, it, it's, it's a work in progress. You know, it's, it's like a moving canvas. Yeah. Like, literally. <laughs> I know I talked to you one night, and I'm like, what are you doing? You're like, I'm sitting in my garage looking at my trailer. I've been out here for yeah. like two hours. Yep. I don't know, man. Yep. And then you like listed off all this stuff and I'm like, Yep. Uh yep. I don't know what to tell you, Jay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? But uh yeah. No, it's cool, man. I know uh I know we mentioned after you had put that tent on and you had posted some pictures, it was like a hot topic and now it's like seems like that's your going conversation on social right now as everybody's like interested in what you're doing and how you're making it work so that's super cool you know and uh oh i dig it man everybody digs the diy stuff you know yeah you know i'm gonna try i'm gonna try to put um some effort into (coughs) getting some video and stuff (coughs) and maybe explaining what i'm doing too so that way it kind of rehashes the whole thought process because you know just in a nutshell I've owned the trailer for three years, and it just came as a flat trailer. There was nothing on it except round bars yeah. that are very similar to Yakima uh, round bars. But um, after that, I 
got the tiers connected and now that the rooftop set this year and it's a like you know it's presented some challenges so i'm trying to make it safe because i already know that that thing will flip on the back of my truck the way it is right now and i don't mind admitting that um it's not safe for me or anybody else it won't flip my truck thank god but still i don't need that thing causing any damage to anybody like i just it scares me to drive right now. I know I have a problem to fix. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to figure it out, um, you know, and get this thing going to where it's safe. You know, that's what's important to me. But I also want it to look cool, you know. Sure. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, <clears throat> you know, but it, it's, there's pros and cons to everything. And, you know, I, I can't trailer launch anymore. That's pretty much what it's come to. And it is what it is. I'll just use a cart. No big deal, you know. It's like it, you know, sometimes you just got to. I don't know, for the ultimate outcome, you know, you got to go for the compromise and decide what's more important. And safety is, above all, most important right now. Yeah. So we're going to go that route. Yeah. <laughs> you know, no, I uh, I know uh, we fished together this past week, and that was one of the things we went down to uh, your little bass and gill club there. Um, and, you know, that was something you were – interested in trying was just launching your trailer before you get to tournament day and yeah i mean that thing that boat man it's just it's just big and it, it is and i think you even mentioned when we were on the water you're like man this thing is huge yeah <laughs> you know yeah. you have so much room it's but, like uh, it's <clears throat> you know yeah in the way that- the way those uprights are on your trailer, I think it just, it, it struggles just because once it hits the water, the back end lifts up and then it wants to, yep. you know, move, uh, you know, one way or the other. And then it just gets up on that bar. I think you're going to scratch up the side of your boat more if you, if you launch it that way. But Well, and the, the main thing is too, is because the way that the big rig is designed, you know, it's 40 inches, you know, at the, the bottom of the hole but it goes up to like 43 inches how do i know it's 43 inches at its widest point because that's the exact measurement of my tears the yep. width of my tears that can fit something in there now mind you i can get a hobie in there and uh because glenn's has been in there um you know but i can get a hobie in there but the i had no idea that was actually one of my like one of my uh uh what's called reservations too about maybe which way I was going to go with a boat and all that. Cause I'm like, man, I don't even know if this thing's going to fit. Sure. But I found out that it touches both sides at the widest point just for a little bit, but it creates uh, an issue for me to launch it. So let's just say if I had it 45 inch, you know, 44 inches wider sure, or, or not wider, but 44 inches wide, it'd probably go fine. To your point, where it goes up, like when you have a steep embankment off, yeah, off of a on the launch, yeah. It, yeah, it's like you got to have that clearance. Yeah. With the Kusa FD, I didn't have that problem because there's enough room, and you could really just slide that thing right off. Sure. Uh, the big rig's just too big. You know, it's just, it gets caught, you know, which is not, it, it, it is what it is, you know? Sure. I mean, it's not, it's not difficult to pull it on and off but if you're trying to trailer launch it's not going to work sure. unless i kick it off like i did <laughs> like using i have to crawl on the trailer and yeah. push it off with my feet yeah it, it's doable i just still again safety is first man it's like those the big thing is is i always wanted to keep the rod tubes out of the water yeah and that's the reason why they're up high and it works great i think if the axle was bigger or the whole base of the trailer would be bigger um but if i can't tra- trailer launch it then they're coming down and sure. I, I i know i'm not gonna do that because water will get in the tubes yeah so I'm not gonna be you know filling my tubes with water with reels in there and stuff so right right right. so it is what it is i mean i'm not heartbroken over it it's just one of those things yeah yeah yeah, yeah. No, i hear you, know? you man but yeah if there's anybody out there doing trailers man I, I, like do it up we all want to see it you know people are really interested in these trailers and what you can do with them uh, i think you'd uh you'd be surprised man and you could do whatever you want i was actually just talking to matt cunningham of jackson uh he's one of the customer service guys over there and he's a real good dude too i fished him a few times um he was asking me about the rod tubes and you know what he should do what size this and that um you know and, and i i, I believe i kind of helped him with an idea that he's gonna go with and he doesn't trailer launch 
Yeah. You know, he just has a really good jet ski trailer that he turned, repainted, and redid. Uh, and he's looking to add a rod tube. And I think he's going to go with an 8 inch actually underneath. Like, you know where that V is? Yeah. Because he's got, he's got straight bars going across. He's, he can fit like an 8 inch there, I think. And that's probably the best you should ever add to sure. any trailer just because you can fit spinning rails in there then. Yeah. Yeah. With, yeah, I know uh I'm gonna be making some some changes here this week to uh mobile HQ. Uh, yep. AKA the paddle and fin trailer, aka home away from home. <laughs> but <laughs> uh yeah, I'm taking that top bunk out just because it hasn't really been utilized and uh I'm gonna try to make like an insert so that way it makes the back bed bigger and the front one as well. So Hopefully I don't need that, and then I'm going to turn that into a cabinet, and then I'm going to do a a little DIY rod rack um, to to put all my rods. The rack would go on the ceiling, and I got an idea of like hinging it so that way, when I'm uh, wherever I need to be, I can take my rods out of the rack and just fold those pieces up to the ceiling. And then in transit, have them down or just have them down and, uh, you know, um, you know, it, uh, works. Sorry. <laughs> I had, a no, te- I, mean, I had a text come through. It's business related. So, um, but yeah, so that but, way uh, it, but tell, but, it's out of the way. If, if, I was going to say, but tell me you weren't like in your garage just standing there with the door down, like, you know, the back of the trailer and you're staring at the ceiling is going hmm. yeah yeah no well there's uh, a fan right there well you know? <laughs> it usually like i don't necessarily have to look at it it's it's more of like i've been making these three hour each way drives down to springfield lately to go fish so it's like driving home or driving driving there you know i got plenty of time to think about plenty of things, you know? <laughs> yes. Sir. And I'm like, Hmm, how am I going to make this work? So, um, but I got an idea cause I used to have a, uh, the idea I have in mind, I used to have a rack like that, um, uh, modern in the ceiling of the garage in my old place. Um, and it was above my Sylvan boat. So I would jump in the boat and throw rods up there in the rack and then take, take the ones down. Cause I had trolling rods, you know, my spinning rods, casting rods, and, you know, kids' poles. Um, if I was taking somebody out, I had extras, things like that. So I could just kind of swap them out. So I, I already got it planned out. Um, should work, but I'm going to do a, a, a new video on the whole trailer, um, you know, here maybe end of the week or something. Um, so kind of do a walkthrough on that. I know when I finished that trailer, that was like one of the most popular videos on our YouTube channel for a bit. I think the hot video now is, uh, the way I rigged up my Garmin in the bonafide pod. So, but, uh, yeah, I dig it, man. You know, it's, it's funny because I know so many people, I show them your trailer. I show them my trailer you know, cause there's so many guys in the kayak fishing world. They just like sleep in the back of their cars and stuff yep. at the launches, you know, not everybody can go and afford to spend, you know, a hundred plus dollars a night at a hotel, you know, yeah. and that just gets ridiculous. Whereas, uh, you know, I think I'm going down, uh, Thursday before the tournament so I can pre fish. So I got Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night at the campground and it cost me, I think it was 60 bucks, you know? So that's like half of a night staying in a yeah. hotel, you know? Plus I can cook all my food, so I save mm-hmm. money there, things like that, you know? So, yeah, man, I'm digging it. I'll I'll do a little, little walkthrough and uh, get that put up there, making a few changes, adding some more decals, things like that. Yeah, I'm kind of hoping to do something like that too, I think, with – because uh, me and Glenn are – fishing the great lakes tournament together um yeah. and i just got a campsite and stuff and i'm like that'll be like the perfect um i guess showcase of it to have, have it out um 
And what I think I might be doing too is just leaving it there at the campsite. But we're gonna. Sure. I think I was gonna just gonna have a video, like maybe do a video with him, like a walkthrough uh, of just what it's like now um, sure. with all the all all the changes and stuff. You know, with yeah. their new because sh- you know the new shoes that it's gonna have are gonna make that thing look totally different. Oh, yeah. In my opinion, kind of cool. And I have gone through a lot of trouble to make these things fit. <laughs> you yeah. know, because I think the trailer needed it and. And two, I mean, it's just, I, I don't know. I just, there's a little look factor in there. It looks cooler now. Yeah. I mean, I must, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it's I just, cool. kinda, like I said, there's still more to do. It's, yeah. it's work progress, but there's, a, there's but always yeah. more to do. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm telling you, you know, it's like, but, I, you know, the, the sad thing is I'm losing, losing the bike racks on it, but yeah. I've got the truck and I can just put bikes in the back of the truck. It's not a big deal. Right on, man. So right on. I'll just move past it and, just get it done so what else you got to do before before first tournament you pretty much um, ready to go yeah eh, for the most part i think i'm gonna make a few lures um like i was talking to you i think i'm gonna try some new stuff out this this time around stuff that i'm not completely no i wouldn't say confident with it's just not confidence paid for me sure um uh, you know throwing jigs um you know of course so I'm going to be throwing the chatters. I mean, I'm going to power fish first because that's what I do. Yeah. You know, and I'm going to see. I just got to make sure not to be a knucklehead and, and stay with a pattern that's not working and, and change colors, uh, which I've been really making the effort to do. Sure. And if any, if anybody doesn't know, it's like I don't. I, I would never claim to be the best bass fisherman because I'm not. Uh, I do love to catch bass though. Um, I'm kind of like middle of the road, I guess. Like I'm just dangerous enough to creep into the top ten. Sure. And knock people out but right you know and i've played I've, I've, you know I've, I've got some decent places here and there but the my biggest problem is, because of that is uh i don't change colors i just stay with confidence base i don't retie uh believe it or not, i just don't i'm just stubborn i don't know sure. i just go and these are the ones that are gonna work i'm gonna bring them but i'm well, trying it's... to stay versatile you know and, and i'm bringing less rods too, yeah so it'll kind of force me to do that it's funny um so we had the whole conversation about jig fishing the other day because that's what I've been doing a lot of. And, um, I haven't really been power fishing much, um, at all. It's too cold. And and that, yeah, that's part of it. I've thrown a spinner bait a little bit, slow rolling a spinner bait and a crank bait a little bit, but I'm like, man, I haven't, I was thinking about this the other day and I was like, I haven't thrown a chatter bait yet. And the whole thing with Drew Gregory was like, dude, why haven't I been like rolling a chatter bait lately? Um, so that's that's one thing on my mind. But um, the video I put out Sunday, um, you know, it was titled "Making Adjustments," and somebody had commented on it. Um, I believe his name is uh, it's Midwest Fishing and Outdoors. Uh, go check his channel out too. Uh, he's up from Milwaukee, I think it is. And, uh, you know, he's like, such a great point you made. And there was, you know, we as fishermen just fail at changing it up and adapting to what's going on with the fish because, you know, the weekend prior when I was there, it was a lot warmer. Sun was out. Um, fish were up shallow. Uh, cold front blew in. We had a storm rolling in that night. I drove three hours home. It was like almost three and a half hours, three hours and 45 minutes home because of this rain and people just driving like idiots. But, um, you know, as my I started out my day, I like instantly went to what I was doing that weekend before, um, casting up shallow, this and that. Mm-hmm. And I did find a few fish up there. Um, actually my biggest one of the day kind of came up shallow, but, uh, I was in a different part of the lake. It was cooling lake, a little bit warmer over there, water temp wise. Um, but when I really started getting on some bites, it was when I moved out deeper and, uh, had I adjusted earlier in the day, I would have probably caught a lot more fish. So I think that's just one thing, you know, guys, when you're out there on the water, you know, don't be afraid to make a change and try something new. I know at one point, the in one of the ways I kind of found it was 
is I was fishing up shallow with my jig and wasn't really getting anything. And I'm like, I know these fish are here. It was a main point in the lake. You know, they haven't fully committed to moving up shallow to get ready to spawn. And I just like cast it off the left side of my boat way out deep and uh, started jigging it back. And there was a ledge right there. And I was throwing a football jig is what I've been using mostly and I'm jigging it up this ledge and I can feel rocks and it's a rocky ledge and you know this time of year fish are mainly feeding on crayfish like that's their main forage that big fish I the 18 and a quarter or 18 and a half that I caught the week prior um, when I went on hooker I saw a crayfish claw coming out of her throat so you know and not only that but you can tell when a fish is feeding on them because that upper lip is going to be like super red where it looks like it's bleeding. That's because it's they're getting down there in the rocks, rubbing it on the rocks, sucking those crayfish out of there. So maybe that's too much information to give away, but <laughs> you know, yeah, uh, I mean, man, that, just a mouth now. <laughs> that, that, that's what we're here for, you know, but, uh, and that's something I mentioned in, in one of the videos is like, I, I, I want to talk more about some of my mode of thinking. I think, you know, I, I take some pretty decent footage of fishing, but I don't like really break down like my thought process. And I think a lot more people grasp to that. So, um, sure. you know, the other thing I talked about in that video was uh, the effect of barometric pressure in fishing. You follow, you follow barometric pressure. Barometric, barometric, <laughs> barometric. Forget it. Uh, you know, yes and no, but it's probably more, more of a no. Um, I'm more of the, so, the the solar lunar. Are calendar. you a moon phase guy? I'm a moon phase guy, and but you know what? I can tell you this. Um, it's lied to me, so there's probably some truth to what you're saying. You know. See, I think the the moon phase definitely does have. Uh, an effect on fish for sure. Um, don't get me wrong on that. Um, however, I think the bear, in my opinion, um, you know, I'm not, you know, Mr. Fish genius or anything, but in my experience, in my opinion, um, I think barometric pressure has a lot more effect than, than moon phase as far as like feeding goes. It would make sense. Yeah. Especially cause like when rain's rolling in, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So usually, uh, and that's one thing, so I'll break it down. So you got bluebirds, sunny skies, usually that's high pressure. And that's when you're going to want to go to a finesse bite. Fish aren't going to want to eat as much um, just because that pressure below the surface of the water is that much more. Um, whereas uh, like when a storm rolls in, usually that's falling pressure right before the storm comes or right as it gets there, um, you'll have dropping pressure and that usually puts on a feeding frenzy. Um, when it's typically steady between, I think it's like 29 and a half to, or 29.8 to 30.4. Um, that's usually, you know, throw whatever, find a pattern and, and they're going to eat. Um, but when, when that pressure is dropping, like that day that I had my PB on the home lake and it was me, you, and Scott out fishing, that was falling mm -hmm. pressure. It was overcast. Like, I mean, I don't know how many big fish I caught that day. I mean, it was, a, I forget, man. It was like somewhere between like six and nine bass over 18 inches. Yeah, and then I was like, well, I'm. I'm killing it on pike you're killing it on bass <laughs> yeah at yeah. the same time <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah it was an active day that day for sure i mean there is a ton of literature out there about barometric pressure and the effects on fish while fishing um but when you combine that with the lunar calendar you can get some pretty gnarly days to match up you know so but uh i know a lot of guys that fish muskies and they're like, ah, oh, lunar calendar. It's, you know, got to get out there because it's, you know, full moon or whatever the heck it is. I don't know. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know much about muskies, but I know some guys that are like heavy into it. And I'm like, you guys are nuts. And then I'll see him the next day. I'm like, how'd it go? Yeah, we didn't catch anything. 
I'm like, yeah, good thing that moon phase paid off for you, you know? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so, I don't know, man. Uh, it, it was some some of my thoughts and, uh, you know, the making of adjustments. I know I've been throwing some different colors and getting out of my realm. And, uh, yeah, that day, it was weird, man. I caught a fish on a jerk bait. I caught a crappie on a drop shot. And uh, the jig I've been throwing, I caught most of my fish on. So, but I did throw a variety of stuff. And at one point, like, I caught a fish on a jerk bait. I didn't get another one after fishing it for another 15, 20 minutes. I threw on a square bill. Didn't get anything else. Threw on a different color square bill, you know. So, and see, and, that, and that's like one of the hardest things <clears throat> because you know how much I love crankbaits. Yeah. Like, I want to throw a crankbait whenever yeah. I can. Yeah. And they're just not bringing in the fish right now. No. It's still cold and definitely yeah. colder up by you. Well, I know it's <laughs> supposed to appear. It's supposed to get like 60 this weekend. And then the following week is supposed to be, you know, pretty consistent 60s. So uh, I think with those two full weeks of warm weather, you know, it's like we we hit 60 plus a couple days. But then this past weekend, you know, I tried going fishing uh, Sunday and it, I think the high was 40 and I went out yeah. and I was like, this is just stupid. I can't even feel yeah. my hands right now. Like winds blowing. I have like no desire to be anywhere near that water yet. <sighs> yeah. Well, it's like, it's just so cold. I'm not fishing an online tournament though for yeah, yeah I was a on monthly a, online tournament. So. I was on a mission. Yeah. I wanted to start yeah, the season out pressure. <laughs> I wanted to start the season out strong and I mean, I won't say it, it, it wasn't a strong start. I ended up in 6th. Yeah. Cuz I got knocked down to 5th and then a gentleman decided to post 100 inches yesterday before it ended, which put him in 1st. He claims he claims he caught them all yesterday. Is he a Filipino Filipino ninja? I don't know. I've never met him. <laughs> I know you know him. But, like, I saw it this morning, and that was, like, the chat, and the KBL was, like, somebody sandbagged. And then somebody screenshot it and was, like, hmm, you know. But I don't know. I just don't see pulling 100 inches when a cold front blows in, and it's nasty out, but. That's that's for a different time and subject. Mr. Keating, sandbagging. Yeah. No. Sandbagging. Congrats to him. him. Congrats to him. He uh he Pootie was in first the whole month. Patrick Pootie Tharp. That dude is a stick, man. Um I've never met him. I've just heard stories and I know people ah, and I've seen his standings. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he's, 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 you know, I don't know. He's, yeah. it's, it's like, <laughs> you know, love, love you, Pooty. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he was in the lead all month with like 98 and a half inches or something. And then last night, 100 inches got posted. So he got bumped down a second. So, yeah, he's got some choice places to hit, too, man. Yeah, he's down in central Illinois by all those, you know, power plant lakes where the big fish are. You know. Yeah, he gets to cheat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like all of us regular people up here. Yeah. <clears throat> it's yeah. like it's a different world three hours south of here. Oh right? yeah. Yeah. Well that's why I've been taking that drive, man. You know? Yeah. It's like yeah. I'm not gonna catch anything like that up here right now. Water temps are in like the mid mid to kinda high forties. You know, yeah. down it's... there water temps have been around 55 plus or minus three or four degrees yeah know? dude i was up in madison yesterday and there is definitely still ice out there i won't say it's solid all the way around but it, there's definitely quite a bit of ice out there still for them yeah it's like it's cold still up north there, was there That's, ice on the lakes up there still mm-hmm. yeah i mean it's not like it's not like you can go out there and ice fish anymore Ooh, it's some of the bays and stuff it, yeah, it's got chunks because up there by the Madison chain, yeah, because we were right there. Um, the river looks fine. It's just at the what I think it was Monona that I saw. Uh, that one had some pretty good 
chunks of ice on it still. And I was like, oh my god, I'm so glad it's not like that down here. Yeah, when I was up at Canoe Copia, uh, the river was pretty much open except for that little channel that goes back behind Rutabaga was still frozen. But there was, uh, I want to say there was a truck out on the ice on, uh, what is that, Mud Lake that's right yeah. north of Wabisa there. Uh, when was that? <laughs> that was Canoe Copia. That was uh, uh, like, beginning, okay. beginning of March. Oh, okay. Yeah, a couple weeks so, ago. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess you know. I mean, they made. were they were further away from the river channel, but yeah. yeah. I mean, still. Just, it, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Just well, so everybody's clear, I have no desire to drive my truck on any ice. <laughs> no. It just I I, I just I can't get over the thought. It's just, it's. I, I just don't want to lose the truck either. <laughs> you've never you've never been to Minnesota in the winter, have you? No, I have. It's just I have an ice fished up there but i know it's gets solid i get it i get it i know the measurements i know it's just well, funny. like it just dumbfounds me every time i see that but there are a lot of people who screwed up this year and that that's the stuff that scares me yeah. even when yeah. it's the coldest and should be the safest right ice is never safe yeah. and it, sometimes you end up losing your truck yeah I, I didn't get up there this year i really wanted to but with all the fishing shows and stuff going on i i just I failed, man, and uh, but I remember the first time I went up there, and we were out on Mille Lacs, and there's like roads with signs plowed out on the ice, and yeah. like we're driving and driving and driving. I'm like, you know, shout out to Scott Purs. I'm like, where the heck are we going, dude? Like, I can't even see shore anymore. <laughs> like, oh, it sounds three so miles scary. out. We would go out to Three Mile Reef, yeah. three miles out. If you guys have, like, um, Navionics, go on Navionics, look at Mille Lacs, and look where Three Mile Reef is. It's out in the middle of nowhere. And I remember the one time I was up there, it was, like, negative 40, and the wind was gusting up to 40. Oh, and, that's, that's fun. dude, it looked like you were on the moon. I got video of it somewhere. I think it's on my Facebook page. But, yeah, it... It literally, you would think you were on the moon or something. It was, it was nuts. You couldn't it's, see anything. <laughs> did Scott, did Scott have his castle by then? Oh this yeah, time? yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, then it doesn't matter. Yeah, staying out in the <laughs> ice shack. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't even. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you got to go I out would there. Be like, to... Sure, I'll go. <laughs> well, the worst part is, is you know, when you got to go to the bathroom to, you know, pee, you know, you you, you got to go out there and that stuff, and you know. Go yeah. as fast as possible. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I bet. Because not only are your fingers going to get frostbite. <laughs> yeah. Hey, now. Hey, this is a family show. Watch it. Watch it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. No. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, glad glad uh, old man winter is on his way out the door and uh, spring is here, man. Uh, About time. Yeah. Yeah. About time. I'm looking. Can't wait to get out there. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. I'm yeah, uh, buddy. I'm heading down to Springfield again this weekend with uh, our man Jacob Ruff and uh, the Godfather. Might he's going with too? He oh, may go. Yeah. He may go. I told Crazy. him. So he's gonna check the calendar, but he's That's getting excited because cool, the place up on Delavan uh, has already got some weeds sprouting up. He was. Uh, he sent me a picture the other day when I was talking to him, and uh, yeah, he's he's getting excited. So I told it's him. It's funny he comes to that. It's like he's like, dude, check out this picture. What am I looking at? Weeds, man. Weeds. <laughs> They're grown in the lake. Yeah. Well, he was like, do you that, think that, these are amazing, Scott? He, he's like, do you think these are weeds or algae? Was his question, and I'm like. <laughs> I think it's got to be warmer for algae, but I'm like, I'm no yeah, biologist yeah. or whatever, you know, lakeologist, whatever you want to call it. Uh, yeah. But, uh, Marine biologist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I'm like, it's got to be weeds. So, but, uh, yeah, he's getting excited to get, get going up there. But, uh, I was like, yeah, man, me and Jacob are heading down if you want to come down. So he's like, I don't think I have anything going on Saturday. And if I do, I think the calendar just got cleared. <laughs> Dude, I would totally go, especially with 
the weather that's going to be, man. Yeah, yeah, I know Jacob texted me today, and I think he said it's going to be like mid to high 60s. Mm-hmm. So it'll be good. It'll be good because he's trying yeah. to get in the KBL event because uh, I know there's a few guys that can't make it, so they're opening up those spots to the public. So if you guys are interested in fishing that event, um, they're going to open up registration on April 6th which is uh, this week. That would be Friday, I think. Today's the first. Yeah, Saturday. My bad. So. It's like Friday, just after. Friday, Saturday, whatever. (laughs) You know, somewhere around there. So. Beginning of the weekend. (laughs) Shout out to to Alan Weedmeyer for this fresh new KBL hat I'm wearing this evening. So, Alan, your T-shirt's on the way. I slacked off. Sorry, bro. It'll be there. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go check my mailbox and see if I got my hat too. Yeah. If not, shoot him a message and be like, "Hey, what's up?" Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. what's, what's up, yo? He's like, holding my hat. He's holding back your hat for his T-shirt. Yeah, yeah. yeah probably. <laughs> it's okay. It happens. It's all good. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm stoked, man. Season's here. Yeah. I'm good, not. Man. I'm not going to see Richie this weekend. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go hang with some a paddle and fin listener. <laughs> Try banging some fish. Maybe there you go. On, maybe get on the water with the Godfather. So maybe teach you a couple of things. He's gonna be Ned rigging the whole time. Watch. Who's that? <laughs> Olson. Oh yeah. <laughs> Probably. Probably. Yeah, I don't blame him. Like, hey, <clears throat> things work everywhere. Yeah, that's one thing I haven't tried down there. I can tell you the crappie like the drop shot, man. Everywhere I've thrown a drop shot, I've just been catching huge slab crappies. I'm like, dude, like, where were you guys this winter when I was yeah. ice fishing? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I could have been drop shot the whole winter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I Turns know what out to do. real minnows yeah. don't work. <laughs> I know what to do next winter now. So, but uh, yeah, cool, man. Yeah. You got anything else, my man? What do you no, think? I mean, I'm good. I'm just going to, you know, pound through that trailer, get that rolling, you know, get ready for this next tournament on a lake that I kind of know. Um, and just try different things, you know. I'll have a report for that, you know. And it's kind of cool, too, because me and Glenn, like, work pretty good as a team out there. We'll bounce off each other, you know, and just try to make it better for the both of us if one of us is lacking. Yeah, you know? yeah. I know we're going to try covering some uh, um, we're going to try covering some water that I haven't explored yet this weekend. So it's kind of the plan. I uh, kind of explored the backup plan first and uh, gotcha. which is good. So if I need to get away from the crowd, I know where to go and hide. So sweet. Yeah, so we're going to ex- explore some water closer to the launch this weekend, which is some should be a lot warmer water, so might be bed fishing. We'll see. But Yeah, should be it's good. Fun. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, you guys, um, with that being said, the normal, recycle your plastics address is in the show notes. Shout out to Hammered Lures for... Uh, donating some plastics to be given away out at uh, the seminar we had. Same with Krabby Bass Lures. Uh, Lazy and Fishing donated a rod. And uh, Southern Lake Co. Check out Southern Lake Company on Instagram, Facebook. Their website's uh, southernlakecompany.com. They donated some Who Rags. And, um, yeah. YouTube videos Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. Podcast for you new listeners is every Tuesday. If you get a question, comment, yeah. topic you want to talk about, email us, paddle, the letter N, fin, at gmail.com. Or on any of our social media, at paddle and fin. <laughs> I think that is it. That's a wrap, you guys. Get out there. Get fishing. Hope they're big coming over the side of the boat. Until next time, guys. Tight lines. Smooth. Pattern.